say hey guys and welcome to another Retry This production. Today I'll be offering my GML lesson number six. Continuing with our platformer engine, we're going to be um, using our variable, using some variables to help us out with our platform, with our engine. We're going to be making jumping and swimming codes today. So we're going to be using our variables as to as mediums to store coding. So I created some the walls already I told you and I created some water. This is new, which we're going to be using. So this is some water. So let's go to our scripts. Better yet, let's go to our player first. And in his create event, where we put image speed equals zero, we also want to add can underscore swim equals false. And that with a semicolon. And um eight speed equals false. Wait no, what am I saying? H speed equals zero. V speed equals zero. To avoid any bugs we may have in our game to make sure our player doesn't start moving before the game starts. And so let's go back to our platform we're in now. This is what we have. So let's add some jumping. Plus our jumping. So in this code, this one's really simple. It's keyboard underscore check underscore press. We use the up button for jumping. Visual key underscore up. And not place underscore three. I think I explained this little exclamation mark in front of an action means not. So if the place is not free, X comma y plus one. Oh. Oh. X comma y plus one. Put a bracket. V speed equals negative ten. So our V speed is equal to negative ten. If we press the up button and X the position X comma y plus one is not free or there's something blocking x comma y plus one, which is basically the floor, where the floor is going to be. So now let's add swimming codes. We have our um, swimming object right here, water. It's a blue square, 16 by 16 square, solid, nothing, no actions in it, just like the wall. Just like the wall, nothing, not solid. So let's put, let's put swimming code. What we can do is if place underscore meeting. The place underscore meeting code is just basically a collision event. So basically if you're touching an object, x comma y comma obj underscore water. So first it checks if we're touching object water. Since we didn't add anything to x or y, it's just if we're touching the water object in general, if we're touching it at all. It can be sideways, upside down, whatever. Because we're touching it. Um, what's it called? Can underscore swim equals true. Else can underscore swim equals false. Oh. Uh, wait, what am I doing? Okay. So we can only swim if we're touching the water. If we're not touching the water, then we can't swim. And we also want to add, hold on. We also want to add, make sure that when we touch the water, we have a slower descent into the water. Or we descend slower into the water. So let's just copy the first line of this. Not the first line, but just that. Save some time. And we also want to add the and. So, and. It also checks V speed greater than one. So if, you're v, if you touch the water and your vertical speed is greater than one, which means if you jump into it and you're falling at a speed greater than one, it'll set your V speed to one. So if you're touching the water and your vertical speed is greater than one, it'll set your vertical speed to one, offering a slower descent. 
Now it's going to make another code called swimming movement. It's just a comment to organize it. So swimming movement. So we're going to do a keyboard underscore check underscore press. We're going to use the up button to swim. So virtual key underscore up. And can underscore swim equals true. Can underscore swim is true only if we're touching the water. So let's make sure that we can only swim if we're touching the water. Put a bracket here. V speed equals negative six. So if we're touching the water and we press the up button, we'll move up and swim in the water. No ears at all. I have a fear this might not work because of one little ear with the variables because maybe it might not work. So if, if it doesn't work, it, I'll, I'll, I'll explain why at the end of the video and I'll tell you to change it. But um, I have a feeling that the can swim variable, even though it's being executed in the player event, it might not recognize it. So um, the player event, we have can underscore swim is false. And so the variable was created there. So I have a feeling, since we're using a script, GameMaker might not recognize it, even though it's there. So we have our execute script still here in the step event. So let's test it out and show you guys what we have. I had this little room here, neat old little room with the platform, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, I got my brand new menu working out, temporary one. I click on platformer, start the game. Left and right movement, perfect. Jump, perfect. Can I make it to that platform? Yes. And swimming. Jump into the water. Oh. Oh yeah, that was the problem. With our water object, set the um, depth to the depth to one. So the player appears in front of the water. I just fixed that problem. Okay, platformer. Okay, jump to the water. Slow descent. And I press the up button, our player swims. Yeah. That's a pretty basic platform. I apologize for the noise if you guys heard that. Um, so basically that's a basic platformer engine. That's a basic platformer engine. We'll, I'll be using this as a basis to add on features and to teach you guys about GML. I'll be using the platformer engine as a basis. So I can teach you guys how to add on features like instance create and instance destroy and all that good stuff. So I feel that I have a need to teach you guys that, but there's only one way to teach you guys about the GML Nesta for you to experience making a game in it. Or to experience making an engine in it would be the best way to teach you GML. It can, basically, the best way to teach you GML is to have you make a game in GML. Yeah. So in any case, this has been an original We Try This production. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe.